Hello and welcome back to the Bird Garden Channel. We just got back from the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival a few days ago, based out of Harlingen, Texas. Our first field trip was to Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands and World Birding Center. We're going to talk about those. I've got some great footage. Beautiful birds, Texas, South Texas specialties. Hang around to the end. You want to see those. And I want to talk about the World Birding Center. Uh, Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands is a part of that. They opened officially in March 2004. I happened to have gone there. The building was open to the public in 2003. I picked up this uh, question and answer brochure while I was there. I don't know if you can see this, the small print. Uh, yeah, 2002. 2002, Texas Parks and Wildlife released this questions and answers about the, the then brand new World Birding Center. <clears throat> it took me a minute to get my head wrapped around this World Birding Center idea. Is Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands the World Birding Center? Yes, but the World Birding Center goes beyond Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands. Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands may have been the first place in the network of places that combined to make the World Birding Center. There are nine in total, nine locations. So that's nine Southern Texas communities taking part with the World Birding Center and the um, Texas Parks and Wildlife taking the lead. And they're partnering with the cities and existing city um, parks in some cases to make this World Birding Center. What's a World Birding Center? It's a name they chose, according to the answer, the question and answer brochure, to indicate that uh, there is world-class birding in South Texas. And that's based upon the number of visitors and the economic impact they have drawn by the birds, which are very important, especially uh, in the American Birding Association area that does not include Mexico. If you're keeping a list with that organization, many of the birds that are found in Southern Texas are found nowhere else in the United States. They call those birds specialty birds. I call them endemic um, to the United States. They're not necessarily endemic. They, they live other places, just not in the United States. So I think I was misusing the term endemic. I was spreading it too broad. So I do like the term specialty. They're Southern Texas specialties. You can find them in other places in Mexico, as I said, but in the U.S., you're going to find yourself in South Texas to see some of these beauties. So the World Birding Center is nine locations, of which we visited several, and there will be a series of videos from our visit. I'll probably put a link up here someplace. It's going to be up here every time, every time I point in the wrong corner. There will be a link of our travels to the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival. Fantastic. I give it a thumbs up. Which, by the way, great segue. If you like this type of content, in particular this video, why don't you hit the thumbs up? Uh, that helps out in so many ways. No cost to you, but it does improve the engagement as far as the algorithm is concerned, and it helps us get the word out about birding. It improves our bird watching genre here on the YouTube platform. So thank you in advance for your consideration that way. And along the way, now it took me a while to get my head wrapped around this nine location nine community world birding center i think of a center as a i guess a large building like the convention center that the festival was was hosted at i think that was a hilton garden by the way in harlingen nice place but the world birding center is nine locations we're talking about one of those today the edinburgh scenic wetlands also part of the edinburgh municipal park ball fields which means open space with a forested border, a couple of main ponds, lots of areas around that, that feature water to attract birds. A beautiful World Birding Center building was built there. And, and there's a photograph you'll see later in the video, just stunning architecture. All windows, floor to ceiling, so you can watch the, bird, the butterflies and the birds right from the, the center, air conditioned. If... And I, we were there, well, it was a few days ago, so it was the late November, 85 degrees. It was a little warm. Uh, it was a little warm on the old guy from the mountains of Tennessee. 
we had a blast. We had a blast. I would not let the heat in November be a deterrent. I would use caution, you know, common sense, sunscreen, hats, you know, know that before you, know. you get over there. Now, this video, Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands, flat, easy walking from one pond to the next, lots of butterfly habitat in between. I think there's something like six acres of butterfly garden. Beautiful. Now, in 2003, when I was there, zero acres of butterfly garden. It was mostly scrub. And quite honestly, I, I was on another birding trip doing the entire uh, Rio Grande Valley from Laredo to South Padre Island. And of course, we went on up around the coast to Aransas. And, but anyway, that was the most disappointing stop. I was glad they built this center, especially for a, a, a children's learning center and all the programs I could see happening there. But as a birding destination, uh, it was a big disappointment. Fast forward to just a few days ago, and oh my goodness, the way that was, thing was smartly planted, and it's just taken over with uh, native vegetation, native blooms, butterflies, and birds everywhere. Listen, you're going to hang in there. You're going to get to see a lot of those birds uh, that we saw, and there were a lot more that we, we've seen. Um, I guess I need to remind viewers that when you're out there bird watching, okay, it's exciting at Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands. It's total rush. I mean, birds everywhere, beautiful birds. If you're from the mountains of Tennessee, like we are, the birds are different. It is so cool. It's difficult to put the binoculars down <laughs> and pick up the cell phone, you know, or the camera and, and go from bird watcher to photographer. It's, it, um, it's a muscle and, and my uh, switching from birder to photographer muscle isn't very strong right now, but we did get great clips, but in the hours of birding there, we were only able to get minutes of clips. And then when you edit that down, well, you end up with a, a video, you know, 10 minutes or less. So that that's what's in store. So tremendous diversity of bird, regardless of the day that you go flat, Easy walking, air-conditioned uh, center, world birding center with restrooms and a drink machine. Uh, the gifts, they have a gift shop. I'm not sure if it was open. They're still having some, uh, they are open daily now. You will have to pay an admission. You're looking at paying about three bucks to, to get in there. I wanted to show my wife a green jay. She'd never seen one. Stunning bird. Check it out for yourself later coming up coming up and she loved it she loved the green jay right there at our first stop um buff-bellied hummingbird first stop first feeder buff-bellied hummingbird she'd never seen one before just like put on a show for her plain chakalaka lifer for her walks right out under the feeder so now in one view shed we've got buff-bellied hummingbird green jay and plain chakalaka and that was that was a really good introduction to the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival. We had a blast and the World Birding Center finally came together for me as a nine location showcase of South Texas birding that does a good job, if not great. I, I, I think there's more to do there. I think they're still growing. I, I think there's still reach that they can attain. They draw people from all over the world to South Texas to see their beautiful birds and the local communities win, the birds win, the habitat and environment wins, and the birders who go there win. And I, I love that style of collaboration. It's absolutely wonderful. This particular location could not have happened without the participation of the Edinburgh city government, uh, the tip of the hat to uh, the city of Edinburgh. Texas. Good job, guys. Keep it up. So they're all winning. Uh, while we were there, uh, we, we were able to, to see things, buy things, make notes to come back and do things. So it, it was a win for the community that's being um, not only supported by the local city there, but also promoted worldwide. Uh, but very special. And uh, Texas Wildlife, is it Texas Wildlife? Texas Parks and Wildlife. Texas Parks and Wildlife, the local government, are really on to something here. Uh, 
<clears throat> opening it up and inviting birders from everywhere, every birding festival, butterfly festival, educational opportunity, STEM classes for the schools. I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. I'm gushing, I know, no apology. This, this place deserves uh, a spotlight, a shout out. So way to go, Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands. And let's jump in to this video and you'll see a little bit of our travel and our, um, our bird list and especially the birds. If you've got a comment or a question, please leave those. If I've made a mistake in this video, the comments are a great place to mention that. And I can work on making the correction. If you know somebody else who would like this video and come on, of course you do, share it with them, share it on your social media. That'll help get the word out about the World Birding Center, the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival, and help the Bird Garden Channel grow. So thanks for your consideration that way. If you're not a subscriber, that really helps the channel and our bird watching genre grow on YouTube. That's the best form of engagement for the algorithm to gauge who's watching what. So if you're watching, let the algorithm know. If you want to see more, hit the uh, bell icon beside the subscribe button and you'll get a little notification every time the bird garden publishes new content. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, why don't you get out there and see some birds? <music>